Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, Cyberpunk 2077 gets played in a car. The answer to GPU shortages will make you cry. AMD's next-gen GPU is an absolute monster. And it's official. AMD is releasing Ryzen 3D CPUs with massive performance gains. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Cyberpunk 2077 has been around for a little while now, and when it was released, the main focus was the numerous bugs present in the game. So most of you likely wouldn't be all that excited if I just showed off footage of the game. Well, what if it's being played in a car? That's right, we heard about Tesla's new Model S being able to play Cyberpunk 2077, but now we have an actual demo, and as you can see, it's running fairly well. In fact, Elon Musk claims that it gets PS5 levels of performance and can achieve 60 FPS in modern games. The new Model S comes with a custom Navi chip based on AMD's Navi 23, so it certainly should be quite powerful. All in all, if you can't find a GPU at a reasonable price, it may be cheaper to just buy a car. Of course, there are cheaper options. Now, before I get to that, what if I told you that you could read a book in just 15 minutes? It sounds too good to be true, but it isn't with today's sponsor, Blinkist. The app that takes thousands of titles in 27 different categories and condenses them in a short 15 minute snippets called Blinks. And this helps you broaden your knowledge in areas like history, science, and tons of other topics faster than ever. I'm personally learning the science of habits and how it affects our lives. Plus, Blinkist recently introduced Shortcast, where they teamed up with popular podcast creators to condense those as well. So don't wait any longer by visiting Blinkist.com slash GamerMeld, and the first 100 of those who visit the link will get unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off the full membership after. Next up, while discussing options for GPUs, it looks like MSI has the answer. By releasing a new GT730. Wow, talk about a sad state we're in when it comes to the GPU market. But yeah, you heard that right. Not GTX, we're talking the GT730 that's based on the Kepler architecture. And speaking of that architecture, I will say that most articles I saw on this made a reference to the recent finding that Nvidia would be ending support for Kepler in their next driver. The issue is that, like I discussed in my report of it, NVIDIA quietly changed that, and when I go there now, it still says that support is ongoing. So I'm thinking this release likely means NVIDIA will not be ending support for Kepler just yet. Unfortunately, I haven't heard anything back from my NVIDIA contact, so if anyone with NVIDIA is watching this, please let me know if you can. Either way, the release is likely just for those with CPUs that don't have an integrated GPU. Basically, just something to get it up and running. Next up for today, if you saw my recent video, you know that AMD essentially confirmed they're planning to release a multi-chip module GPU. They did this in a recent Linux kernel update in regards to Old Baron, which is supposed to be AMD's upcoming cDNA2 based GPU. Well, in an update from known leaker Kepler on Twitter, he went over the configuration of Old Baron, and it's almost unbelievable. According to him, it comes with two dies, each with eight shader engines and 16 compute units per shader engine. That makes for a total of 256 CUs. That's 16,384 cores. For reference, AMD's current RX 6900 XT only comes with 80 CUs. Now, according to Kepler, the MI200 may only come with 224 of those activated, but that's still huge. Basically, this shows the power of using an MCM design, and this is only with two dies. There may not be anything stopping them from going to three or four. The MI100 comes with 120 CUs right now, so it's essentially a few more CUs times two, meaning we can expect more than double the performance. Let's just hope the rumors on AMD doing it with RDNA 3 are true. All in all, AMD's upcoming GPUs are looking more and more exciting. And lastly for today, we have new official information on AMD's upcoming 3D vCache along with confirmation that it is coming to Ryzen with some huge performance gains. So let's get right to it. Starting things off, AMD just released a video that gives us more details on the 3D stacking technology they showed off at Computex. For starters, they go over how AMD created the 3D stack using papers. 
Basically, they flip over the die, shave off 95% of the silicon, and then place the L3 chip over it. And because AMD's stacking technique is bumpless, they're right on top of each other, which makes the two silicon a thousand times closer than they would be if they were side by side. This ultimately lowers latency time among the obvious benefits to space. Then they go over the benefits of using TSVs versus bumps, etc. Ultimately, AMD's 3D V-Cache is looking really interesting. And that brings me to the last part of the story. While I was researching this, I saw that Tom's hardware confirmed from AMD that they are without a doubt releasing Ryzen CPUs with their 3D V-Cache. This says AMD expects production to begin later this year, which means we can expect a release early next year. And of course, while we more or less figured as much, this completely confirms it. With that said, I found out that Tom's Hardware updated their original article on this from Computex, so I am ultimately a bit late. I know I saw reports claiming as such after Computex, but I could never find out where they were getting the information from, so I decided against reporting it. Either way, Tom's Hardware makes it clear that 3D vCache is coming. And when we go back to AMD's Computex event, we can see that AMD claims performance as high as 25% in games, with a 15% boost on average. Let's just say, that's huge. I really focused on AMD's FSR during the announcement at first, but this is really just as big, if not bigger. And while Ryzen 3D, 6000, or whatever it's called, is made to be more of a stopgap until Zen 4, it's actually a real performance leap. We'll just have to see if Intel can compete with Alder Lake. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's upcoming 3D stacked Ryzen or do you think Intel will beat it? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!